there comes a time when a nation's given over to judgment. And I think that's the thing that's the hardest for me. And, and I've wrestled in prayer with this. I've asked counsel from men of God that I respect, uh, people that I know are prayer warriors. Uh, and, and I've asked myself, maybe you have too, and I say it this way in my prayer life. I say, Lord, I want to be faithful, but does there come a time when they will no longer endure good, sound doctrine? Do they even care? Do they even want to know? Lord, have they made their decisions? Have they set their faces like flint? And, you know, I, I, I still wrestle with that every day, okay? I truly do. Because, again, I do what I do, contrary to my critics, because I want people to live and not be murdered and slaughtered, you know? And this is the thing that's fascinating. When you try and get someone broken out of their irresponsible position, that somehow, you know, a Marvel comic book figure is going to come to their behalf, totally fantasy, they will rather believe believe that than the God of heaven who spoke the worlds into the into existence by the sheer word of his power, absolutely historically documented miracles of Jesus, Jesus resurrecting from the dead, and, and yet they hated him without a cause, and the whole world lying in the evil one. So this is what the battle is going, but I am simply astonished at how few people, Dave, maybe not get it isn't a fair question, but look to you to carry the torch, yet they're not willing to lift their arm and carry their own torch, okay? They want you to start something, and I'm talking in the exchange of ideas. They want they want this, they want that, but then they go back, they have another beer, they smoke another joint. By the way, I get people that, yeah, man, I was new in Hodges, I'm higher than a kite, you know? Well, one of these days, you're higher than a kiteness is going to bring you down into the earth and a reality check. So now we're, we're just in a, in a problem uh, that, that I don't believe there are any natural answers for outside of being directed by God. You know, so that that's my position. I, I and I think we continue on. You continue on until the Lord tells you you're done. You know, that's correct, and that's exactly what I'm doing. I sit down every morning or every evening when I write, and I ask, you know, "I will be done." And, and and I try to use that as my guiding light. And hopefully, I'm more right than I'm not. But Steve, you asked, you raised a really good point about how do we move people from intellectual awareness to um, overt action. And I think you're right. It's going to take spiritual intervention because right now people are programmed in learned helplessness mode that their actions can't make any difference. And they don't understand that one man takes a step forward and a thousand follow him. You have a movement. But they don't see that. They just see their one tiny step. And why should I stick my neck out to get it chopped off? Because no one else is going to support me. And that's where I think we're at. Well... Here's the thing, you know, you do what you do, you do it under the Lord. Isn't it amazing that the world says, take a selfie, buy a stick, put your camera on the selfie, and oh, by the way, just keep backing up until you back off a cliff, or keep watching your idiot phone, uh, and by the way, I have an iPhone, and I carry it, uh, 10% of the time, I'm looking, I use a flip phone now, you know, but, and they walk into subway tracks, they walk into railroads, they, you know, they walk in the street, get run over, but it's fascinating. The world says, love yourself, give yourself a group hug, uh, you blah, 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 self, 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 and Jesus said, anybody would find me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Isn't that an interesting uh, analogy, or if you will, uh, a contrast? You know, here's something interesting. I'm, I'm getting uh, a friend of mine says, tell Dave hi. I sent him the email, which was stupid, the F word mongers at bob.white from G.I. Joe. And I want to I share this in real time. I think it will help people. Here's what this, this spawn of hell said. You idiots, they build the U.N. trucks there, then truck transport to shipping ports. 
bunch of fear-mongering idiots, okay? Now, this is what my friend said, and these are real battle-hardened veterans. God bless all you guys. Uh, you know, um, I won't even call out anybody's names because it's just too dangerous. So he said, yeah, and this is the one who just sent me and said, say hi to you. Yeah, right. That's why when I showed it to my guys that are with me on the special response team right now for training, that we all had a laugh because we read that comment and all said, yeah, but those vehicles are Bearcats, and they're located everywhere in the country. He is a moron and not a no. So if you're a real uh, service member, you know, uh, G.I. Joe, basically, I guess when you use the word in front of the F word, mongers, I guess you're the one that looks like the stupid, will leave the other word open, and you're either a paid hack a troll or just a disgusting primordial thing that crawled out of the slime. Now, Dave, you know, people say, you shouldn't do that. You should be higher than that. Listen, pretty soon people are going to have to realize this, that embracing the bottom of the devil only makes the devil more, how should I say this, more secure in that how dumb are these people unto death. I, I, I coined a term, I'm sorry, but I did, duds, dumb unto death death, okay? And now I think we're moving from uh, dumb unto death to denial unto destruction. So, you know, the thing is, is that it's getting worse and worse and worse. And it's, I used to tell a story, and I think it's true even at this point. It's like a guy who's at a, fire, a wall, he's going to get shot with a firing squad. He basically thinks if he puts a blindfold over his eyes, and start singing a song that somehow he's not going to die. Oh, guess what? We all know this. His voice goes silent. The hood becomes a uh, cloud of uh, red mist, and he's dead. That's how I see most of America. And, and I want to share this with you. Until the man... Of God says, and I think Franklin Graham has gone on record, God bless him, and a few others, until people repent, we can't stop what's going to happen that God has declared his judgment on. But here's where the disconnect comes, and I am absolutely seeing it on a basis. I never thought it would even get to this uh, level before, you know, we would be at war. The fact is, is that people do not want to move out of their complacency, their apathy, their indifference, their laziness, or their routine. You can call it normalcy bias. You can call it cognitive dissonance. You can call it a lot of stuff. But basically, as long as it's good today, who cares about tomorrow? Well, I had a college professor who once said, Americans live for Friday. And he was using that to explain why we don't accomplish many of our long-term goals as individuals. And that goes to explain what you just are talking about right here. And you're absolutely right. Bury your head. But, but Steve, there's going to come the time when the trucks with the blue helmets are coming down your street. There's going to come that day in the midst of food riots where strangers are trying to come in through your front door. That's when I think a lot of people are going to wake up and not until... Well, and at that point, they'll either be dead or taken to camp. See, here's the deal. You and I, and, and everybody on talk radio, I know that, 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 and listen, I can't believe how petty people are. They take Alex over on, they take me on over stuff. You know, can I just share one thing that's really important? I used to say, and I still say this, but maybe not with the same effect I should, if you understand the Third Reich, and I believe I've got a really good handle on the Third Reich. If you understand they never lost World War II, and Dave, you and I did a show on that. If you understand that they, their richest industrialists and pharmaceutical giants, bankers and financiers, they didn't go uh, to the Geneva Convention. They didn't go to the Nuremberg War Trials. They all came to this country, you know, and had a jolly good time. And so the point that's really perplexing to me is that if you don't understand the root of evil, you can't deal with the fruit of evil. And it's, it's the whole 
uh, genetic drift away from being created as unique individuals out of the loving uh, heart of God to absolutely establish a people. And by the way, uh, angels are more powerful than we are at this point. But the point comes in time where God said, you've made man a little lower than the angels. And then Paul said, but know ye not that you're going to judge angels? That doesn't mean sentence angels, although it may mean uh, uh, being on the jury with fallen angels. But the whole point is, is this human creation. God made the most amazing entities in the universe. That's us. And when we fell, instead of just saying, move aside Moses, because he did, I'm going to wipe them all out. And Moses, thank God, he was there saying, God, you can't do that because of your word. I tell people, if I'd been Moses, I'd say, let's do it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's, and that's not right, okay? God obviously didn't put me in that spot, but it's, uh, we're at a point now, Dave, where the spiritual realm, we put up with the physical realm of evil, or we sit and watch the YouTube videos, or we watch the horrors of little children having their hearts ripped up. And i got to tell you something, even the, even the picture of all those canine dogs uh, being butchered, you know, basically euthanized, you know, and, and the company in America that got paid 9900 bucks a month for each dog. I started weeping when I saw those German shepherds, you know, and, and I, I, I think I put the article up where St. Francis said he, uh, St. Francis of Assisi said, he who would be cruel to animals will be equally cruel to humans. And and when you understand that Iran just basically is arresting dog owners and, and destroying their dogs and stuff, and you hear the heroics of these dogs and you see their pictures with medals and you talk to the guys that were canine handlers, there's a love relationship, there's a supernatural relationship where that dog will, will lay down its life and do anything to save its master's life. And, and I'll tell you what, I understand why Michael Savage got so furious when the government took those dogs away. So what does that have to do with what we're talking tonight? These entities do not value human life. They hate human life. They're absolutely entrenched in this country. And, you know, people say, well, why, why is the Air Force only able to feel 50% of its aircraft? Why are the Marines having such a problem? Why is the Navy's top ship shutting down? Why are, you know, the, why is the USS Stennis, uh, an aircraft carrier, being targeted? which, by the way, the Navy denied, okay? Obviously, when a lock-on system goes into effect, whether you're in a fighter, uh, an aircraft carrier, a destroyer, obviously there's an electronic signal set, and those type of things are saying, and, and China just flat out said, we're not afraid of you. The day of aircraft carriers projecting force is, is basically done away with by why one hypersonic nuclear missile, one hypersonic nuclear missile, or a hypersonic nuclear torpedo or if you want you flip a switch with your electronic technology and things go bad so what i'm saying is this the military has been emasculated and for the record i've never been in the military the military and i have pledged the last 20 years of my life on talk radio to helping vets okay and not just with my words or being a cheerleader and without going into detail i walk the walk in that realm I, I even split up with friends who who basically wouldn't make good on their commitment to help this brother or that brother. You know, can I help them all? No, but at least I made the effort to help whatever I could and whoever I could still would do it today. But we're at the point now where at the end of the day, at the end of this radio broadcast, at the end of the evening, at the beginning of the morning, we absolutely have to understand we are under attack. We have to get right with the Lord. That means confessing our sin, asking Jesus to come into our life as personal Lord and Savior. And by the way, the greatest tragedy I know is this. The power of the gospel is in the person of Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, who is the gifter of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, is the one who lifts up Jesus Christ. And most people are, are settling, Dave, for a, a dead orthodoxy instead of a vital relationship with moment by moment.